Let's talk about a Space Marine Legion that has a past that they still try to cover up. Man, I sure hope they don't come after me for making a video about them. The Dark Angels are shrouded in mystery for most of the Greater Imperium, with most of their history being expunged during the Horus Heresy. This has to do with the Fallen Angels, or the Fallen, which are the traitorous Dark Angels, who fell to chaos. Their main goal is to take back their chaos-stricken brethren and make them pay for their sins, making them repent through slaying them, of course. They don't have a homeworld anymore, but they use a chunk of it with a fortress monastery on it and they call it the Rock. Or the Tower of Angels, but I think the Rock sounds cooler and a bit funnier. The Blood Angels, I mean Grey Knights, I mean Dark Angels. I don't know how, but when I first got into this hobby, I had them mixed up for like a month. Are the Emperor's first Space Marine Legion. At the start of the Emperor's Great Crusade, they were the Emperor's first army, with them using recovered ancient human technology and plasma weapons. Since they were the first Space Marine Legion, they got a really good mastery over both of these, with them being known around the galaxy for their mastery of plasma weaponry. For being the first Legion, they were the most experienced and large for a good amount of time. This was until decades of warfare eventually whittled down their numbers. Deadly wars like the Radigan Xenocide got rid of a lot of them. Well, they did destroy the culture, history, and many other things of Xenos races. So it's kind of a take and give. They mostly had Terraborn Jaden warriors until they came upon the world of Caliban, which had knightly power armor clad techno barbarians, which just so happens to be the home of their Primarch. Either way, both were very honor bound and kind of made a good grouping together. Caliban was a death world with a dark forest that blanketed the entirety of its surface. It was close to the Ayatar and had some issues because of it. It was extremely beautiful and extremely deadly because of all of the warp and mutated monsters around. Due to these weird and wacky warp energies, survival was not guaranteed. Due to the weird beasts that would ravage through forests. Humans that lived there would be in fortresses or castles that were built upon flat forests. The society of Caliban kind of went back to medieval Europe. The nobility and higher classes being raised to live and die by the sword. With their stories being immortalized for their courage against the dark beasts of the forest. There's also an old wives tale on Caliban saying that you can keep the beasts of the forest away by subscribing to me. I mean, I'd say it's probably true. It's better to have that protection than nothing, right? Lionel Johnson, a Primarch made by the Emperor, was sent to the world of European monster hunter known as Caliban by the Chaos Gods. The people of Caliban had basic power armor and firearms similar to bolt pistols. But Lionel Johnson didn't know that for a while because he was a feral child. But then he was found by an order of power armor wearing knights. Chief among them, Luther, who found and named Lionel Johnson. Meaning Lion, son of the forest, in his native tongue. Because the Lion is a Primarch and everybody else is just a normal human, he very quickly rose to the top of the Order of Knights, where he destroyed many beasts including his claim to fame, which is an extremely rare Lion. This is also like half a Hercules reference, with Hercules fighting the Nemean Lion, which is really cool. I love literary allusions to any kind of mythology. Lionel Johnson conquered all the Caliban by getting rid of all the monsters and uniting the Knights together and dealing with some rivals. And when Lionel Johnson was about to destroy all the great beasts in a victory lap, the Great Crusade found him, reuniting him with his chapter and his father. As if it was fate, the Dark Angels were actually the ones to find him first. And when the Dark Angels did finally find him on Caliban, they crowded around him, in their green power armor, like the Dark Angels of Myth. And that nickname stuck, and that's what they're called now. And when the Emperor of Mankind came to meet the Lion, he descended from the heavens of Caliban in big golden ships and invited him into the Empire of Mankind. Which the Empire took very politely and said, yeah dude, of course. The Dark Angels, because of the sorry state they're in, were filled with shame. But they found pride in having their Primarch back and trying to get their Legion back to a state of greatness. And they did many good things for their own Legion and the Imperium as a whole. Especially when some of the Knights of Caliban became Space Marines. Especially Luther, the knight who found the lion and raised him from his feral rat days. Luther acted as an advisor and a right-hand man to the lion, and was unanimously called a great leader. And nothing bad ever happened to him. Ever. When the Horus Heresy broke out and humanity started fighting against itself with chaos interjecting, the Dark Angels couldn't really do anything, mainly because they were on fringe shield worlds. But the Dark Angels higher-ups found out really fast that something wrong was happening, with some of their Astartes brethren falling to chaos. At the time, Lion was leading some of his sons to go get a big old weapon with the help of some Iron Warriors, and their Primarch, Percherabo, who the Dark Angels didn't know had turned traitor yet. Percherabo and the Lion had a quick heart-to-heart, -heart, with the Lion giving Percherabo the big old weapon. This was a bad idea, though, because it disintegrated so many Space Marines during the drop site massacre. And then Rhino Johnson and Rabute Gilman went to go fight Conrad Kurz, the Night Haunter. 
battling chaos worshippers and then going home, and then the worst thing ever happened. Well, not ever, but it's still pretty bad. Remember how I said absolutely nothing wrong would happen with Luther? Well, I lied. I was just kidding, because everything in the Warhammer universe sucks. Because Lionel Johnson's surrogate father turned to chaos. Because Luther felt like he wasn't getting enough glory or recognition. In one final betrayal that happened after the Siege of Terra, Luther poisoned the new recruits and also started waging war against the larger Imperium. The Lion found this out and bombarded the planet, and then went down to fight Luther one on one. Little did he know Luther was now a Chaos Champion, with the Lion not actually being able to kill Luther because he loved him. Luther had no such hangups though and struck a fatal blow on the Lion. Just then the Chaos Gods took away the Chaos Tinted Veil from Luther's eyes as they blew up Caliban, killing him and possibly the Lion, with only the Fortress Monastery of the Order of Knights standing, and now it's called the Rock. The Lion did live from the battle though, with him being placed in a deep coma, in a secret chamber of the Rock, so hidden and so secret that that's probably where all the dryer socks go. This is a closely guarded secret with only like three people knowing, but a rumor would spread over the Dark Angels Legion saying that the Lion would come back the day the Dark Angels would go in defense of the Imperium the last time. It's also said by Chaos worshippers that the reason the Lion was late to the Horus Heresy is because he was weighing his options and seeing who would win, only picking the winning side. With some of the traitorous fallen Dark Angels thinking that is fact, but nobody knows that for sure though, mainly because the Dark Angels have been very secretive ever since the Horus Heresy, with them keeping things like the Lion's true fate and the Fallen under wraps, with them keeping it very secret that the Fallen exists at all of people getting dealt with on site if they ask any questions, with it only really being known within the inside of the faction, with them trying to erase all the traitors from existence. They mainly do it to have a good relationship with the rest of the Imperium and not be labeled as enemies of mankind, because turning into a traitor legion is like, really bad, especially with how the Inquisition has act. They also have these secret mischievous little guys that run around the rock, called the Watchers in the Dark. They're little dudes with psychic abilities that wear robes. They kind of remind me of the Jawas from Star Wars, with them being of unknown origin. Nobody knows what's underneath the cloak of those mischievous little scamps. Mostly they're servants of the Dark Angels and just hang out on the rock, with them sometimes slinking away to secret chambers or passageways that the Dark Angels have no idea exist. They go where they please and are allowed to do whatever they want, and getting in their way is a really bad omen, with people who get in the way of the Watchers in the Dark going missing soon after. These Watchers in the Dark are probably my favorite little tidbit of lore from the Dark Angels. Just such an interesting little lore quirk. When Gilliman came back at the start of the Indominus Crusade, they almost killed him because they thought Gilliman knew about the Fallen. Instead, he just gave him Primaris Marines and went about his way, which they took semi-graciously, except for the fact that they didn't trust him at first. But then they saw how good they were at combat and how they were loyal to the Emperor, and they allowed him in. And because they were so goaded, they asked for more. Recently, the new big bad, Vastro the Archophane, broke into the rock with the help of the Black Legion, looking for a fragment of a new MacGuffin that would enslave and destroy humanity. And when all seemed lost and he was about to get that fragment, the lion came back. Nah, I'm just kidding. He didn't. He was still sleeping, and the Dark Angels just beat him back by themselves. I do like the idea of the lion waking up as an unforeseen consequence of the Archophane, with the Arcs of Omen being cast out because of the lion because I guarantee you Vastor didn't know he was there. So it would have been really cool, but maybe they're going to bring the line back in an even better way, and I'm just writing some crappy fanfiction. But he is coming back and got his new miniature announced. With the lion being brought into the 42nd millennium, there are probably some things that are going to happen. With the new information that we now know, Lionel Johnson both hates and begrudgingly loves Gilliman's guts. He will most likely feel betrayed and hate the Imperium for what it's become, with him most likely fighting Gilliman in a brief misunderstanding. Mainly because he can't trust anybody because of the traumatic riz that Luther and his chaos-stricken brethren imprinted on him. Either way, it looks like it's going to be fun, with the Lion and Angron fighting in a sword duel. And hopefully on Armageddon so Gazgol can get some good licks in for good old Yarek. In Tabletop, the Dark Angels with the Arcs of Omen are genuinely like the best army in the game right now, with them using the Devastator Doctrine on bikes. With them basically being motorcycles, and with them also using plasma guns and terminators specializing on turning their enemies into paste. The chapter is even showcased in a game called Space Hulk Deathwing, where you play as a squad of Dark Angels Terminators going into a Space Hulk, which is based off an offshoot tabletop game based in the 40k universe where you are a bunch of Terminators fighting against Tyranids. One of their best leaders on tabletop is Azrael, 
the chapter master of the Dark Angels. With him using the Lion Sword, he's surprisingly just kind of alright at melee, having alright strength and saves, and he can reroll hits for his fellow Dark Angels and himself, as well as him having some psychic suppression abilities and having an invulnerable save half of the time. And that's the Dark Angels for you. This time I talked a little bit more about the future lore and speculated on it a bit. Make sure to tell me if you like that so I could talk more about future speculation later on. As well as what you think about the Dark Angels, something I might have missed, or if you have a request for something I could cover. Make sure to tell me in the comments down below and maybe subscribe. It's for free and I put out a 10 minute video every week. Till next video fellas.